Hey everybody, my name is Charlie, and this is a brand new game coming out today when you're seeing this video. It's Land of the Vikings. This is a city builder that's all about basically, well, starting uh, with a nomadic group of Vikings, which have decided to settle down in, uh, well, wherever we decide to settle down. Let's go ahead and hit new game. I haven't actually decided what map I'm going to use yet. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is get a village name, and I, I don't really know if I care so much about what this is going to be called, so we're going to call it Runovic. I think Runovic is a fine name. We'll just let this thing go. And let's get a, a, a color for our flag here, our banner here. Let's, um, I kind of like the, you know, I kind of like red, but I like black and red like this. I think this looks kind of cool. It could be good. And then, uh, there's a lot of symbols and stuff we could do here. Uh, maybe we'll change it to something like this. This looks like it's pretty scary. Huh? You saw this flag coming at you. You're just like, oh no, what am I going to do? I think I like that. Okay, so next we're going to choose a map. Uh, we've got the small map, which just has high resources, uh, distances. Looks like resource distance is very near. So this one's probably more of like the beginner map, which... I probably should play, but I'm not going to. Uh, we're going to go to a valley. we got a very large map here. Um, resources are normal, and they're pretty far away. Sounds a little bit like a slower playthrough. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Green Bay. Big map. Like it. Normal resources. Okay. And the distances is near. So resources are a little bit closer to us. I kind of like that. Because why would we settle in a place where resources are just, you know, too far away? White Rivers looks like it's probably the hard mode one. I'm going to go for like a happy medium here. I think Green Bay seems like a cool place uh, to settle here. So we're going to try that. Um, now, I will have the tutorial open, but probably going to skip most of the pop-ups until it gets to the things that I haven't yet experienced. And I, I don't know when that will be. Um, I've gotten all the way into agriculture and stuff, so uh, we'll see. So let's go ahead and hit start the game. Now, one thing to note here is that my version of this game right now is pre-early access. So... Things are all subject to change, uh, but you can check it out. Link in the description. Uh, it should be available for early uh, on early access right now on Steam uh, for you as of the posting of this video. So you should be already here, good to go. Um, so I'm just going to skip through this stuff, and I'll explain what all that stuff is anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and hit pause really quick. You have all of our little Vikings here that are just, like, walking around. And pause is not actually pause it's super slow motion you can see they're still moving a little bit so i kind of i kind of dig that it's cool we are going to start with a long house uh which comes with stone storage and log storage built in so we don't need to build any extra storages currently um it also means that most of our building resources are going to be stored here so we're probably going to be building around the long house uh as we go we have Poor houses. They all have... There's many different designs, but it looks like we're starting with three of the same designs. So I'll probably try to do a little bit more diversity here as we go. And then finally, we have the Carpenter. It also has its own log storage and timber storage. Um, as we click the Carpenter building, you can see that we have these resources. Logs get turned into timber. The quantities here are not a ratio of conversion, as I originally thought they were when I played this game. It's actually just the amount that's in storage. So... Uh, what we want to do is we can set a limit to how much we're allowed to store. And in this case, I'm going to say I want to store, like, I'll say, like, I don't know, 120 or so. I want to store more. Um, it says enter the value of maximum production. If the value is zero, production continues until the storage is full. Kind of like that. Let's just do that instead. Um, we're going to take a carpenter. Now, each of our Vikings, which I will look at to more in depth in a second, each of our Vikings do have various different traits. And actually, we'll go ahead and look at one. Let's just click this guy here. Uh, Slothy Olfsen. I can add a nickname here if I want to. So if you'd like to be one, I guess you can leave a comment and I'll make you a Viking. But it's not going to change their name. It's just going to add a, uh, a nickname in the middle there. All right. But I just wanted to mostly show you this. So this person's wearing poor clothes. He's a man. He is barehanded, I guess. I think this means he doesn't have a weapon, probably. Um, and then 22 years old, okay? Now, he's currently a laborer, but he can be assigned to a lot of different jobs. So if we want him to be a specific job, we can we can do it here. Don't worry, there's other places to do it too. Uh, if I take a look at this, he's a coward. He can run far away at the slightest fear, so he's probably not going to be a good warrior. Uh, he's also clever, so he's a good thinker. Uh, and he's charismatic, so... He's basically like the scared bard, it looks like. So, okay, fine. Uh, you can see his luck stat is 1. His strength stat is 0.8. We have 1 speed and 1.5 and intelligence. And then you have also the various status elements here, including how his health is, how happy he is, how tired he is, and how hungry he is. In not exactly the listed order. And then finally, his family attachments here. All right. And so what we're going to do here 
is we're going to want to assign people to different buildings. The Carpenter's advantageous talent is power. So the stronger you are, the faster you can process these uh, logs into wood. So we're going to choose somebody who's got really good strengths for this. And I think this person here is pretty good. So we're going to have this person work as the carpenter. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on the status for this building. Okay. First thing we want to do before we unpause is get a lay of the land and figure out where we're going to be at, where our resources are at, etc. Because which, however I choose to build is going to be indicative of that. Now, first thing I kind of want to do is mark trees to be done. We're going to go ahead and skip the tutorial there for that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay in pretty much all the trees in this area to start because we're going to need a lot of construction supplies as we go here. So I'm thinking this right here might be my agriculture area anyway. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to go through this area and probably all of these trees too. So we're just going to mark them. Um, they'll go ahead and do them, I think, uh, whatever order is convenient from them. That's fine with me. Uh, the next thing is to get stones going. And we can maybe pop these ones that are really close. Uh, it does. It is kind of time intensive to process these, so I don't want them traveling long distances yet to do that. So we're going to have them do that. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to lay in a road here. Let's see. I haven't seen this map yet, so I'm not sure where we're going to be going. But I think it's probably safe to say a road right through the middle of town here is a good idea. So we're just going to have a road go straight through here, kind of like that for now. Uh, and then we can also bring it this direction and make it go that way for now, too. Okay. So we're going to let the time run now. And uh, let them gather wood, let them get building resources going, etc. While I talk about some of the things we need to do in this game. All right. First thing, people will move into vacant houses and they will form families. This is how we grow our population. So we're going to want to have more houses. The trees get cut down, processed into timber, and the stone is going to get uh, pickaxed, picked processed uh, into stone area, which will provide stone foundations and stuff for places like this. So just look at these guys. I love the detail in the people. A lot of these building games, they don't put a lot of time into the detail for people, but look at this. Like they actually look pretty good, right? They've done some work to make facial features look pretty convincing. And they're also quite unique in some ways. Like this person here, look at him, dude. That red hair, that really choppy haircut. He's even got this tattoo thing on the side. That's pretty sweet. This person here is uh, kind of got the shaved head approach, but sort of the, the ponytail look. And his, he's got the little, oh man, his facial hair is pretty sweet too. I could never grow a beard like this. I just, I can't get through the stage where it gets really itchy. As soon as it does, I have to shave it. This is well past that stage. Uh, and then each one of these villagers also are going to walk around um, and go to the various tasks in the order that we ever tell them to. One cool feature, but also kind of gets old fast, and I hope that they do add a way to turn it off, is if you zoom time faster, you'll see that there's like this whole fast moving effect that's on a lot of these different villagers. So if they start moving really fast, well, yeah, there's a little bit of a glitch there, but normally you'll, you'll see it as we go on, though. There's like this whole like zooming blur effect that takes place on these villagers, which is kind of nice. I, I actually am weird that it's not showing it now. It's been showing it to me the entire time I've been playtesting. Now I'm wondering. Oh, there it goes. There it is. You see it? Yeah. The, the, if they go really, really fast, maybe on the road, you'll see this blurring effect. It's kind of interesting. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So kind of like, I, I, I like it. It's cool. But like after a while, maybe it gets a little old and I wish there was a way to turn it off, but there isn't. Uh, all right. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to follow the objectives to start because it's usually a pretty good guy, but I am going to deviate slightly because the game's timing is a little bit weird when it comes to winter and um, I need to move a little bit faster. So um, we need to gather three wood, 20 stone, 32 timber. That's going to happen organically as we've already laid it in. So the next thing is to build a marketplace. And the marketplace is where everybody's going to go and get their stuff. So uh, I'm going to go into the storage section. We're going to go to marketplace. And um, this marketplace is going to be placed right next to the longhouse. I think this is probably a real nice place for it. So we're just going to pop that in just like that. And this is our new building. Now, when we build a new building, there's three stages. There is the pre-construction stage uh, where they basically lay in the foundations that are going to be needed. Then they're going to deliver the resources needed to actually build the building. And then finally, a builder will come and do it. So let's assign a couple of builders to the camp. We'll go like with two, I guess, for now. 
And then what we could do is we can come down to the management tab down here in the bottom left and we go to jobs. This is very banished like, which I appreciate. I have no problem with that. I can even pin this if I want to. Um, and you can pin all these different things if you if you want to, to make sure that they're always available, which is nice, like your resource list, etc. You can pin all these things if you want to. So for, this, for the time being though, I'm just gonna keep my objectives and my job list open so I can see where things are. And the objectives will just be at the top. So anything you pin will end up being further down. So what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we have an adequate number of builders and the regular laborers, these are people that will go cut trees, they will cut down, uh, they will cut up the stones, um, they will transport goods. So it's important to have a lot of different laborers. We don't wanna do things like I, I tend to do in games where I assign everybody to a job and there's nobody that's just like a carrier or a general laborer. I wanna make sure I don't do that in this game because it's gonna get bad really quick if I do. Now, the game hasn't told me to do this yet, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I think it's important. We're gonna first start out by getting a gatherer's hut. And the game's gonna tell me to do this uh, very soon, but I'd like to get food going as fast as I can. And it looks like a gathering can take place right here, which is a pretty decent little spot for this, I guess. So we'll go ahead and put in a gatherer's hut right here. Now what I'm gonna do so that we make sure we have a lot of food is I'm gonna go ahead and prioritize the gatherer's hut. Even though it's not the current task, this building, in my opinion, is more important than that building. So we're going to get this one going. And uh, they're going to start laying it again. The pre-construction work here to uh, place it down. You'll see a progress bar as things build. And this is the resources that are needed for this specific stage. Once that's done, builders will come over and do it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do for us is start putting in additional houses. And I'd like to do different design houses. So there's three different designs for the poor houses. And um, it looks like the ones that are currently in are these narrower ones, like this, which are not too shabby. But I think, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place this one down. It's a little bit jagged, which I don't mind. Like I don't, I'm not someone who likes, you know, symmetrical grids. So um, if you've been around this channel long enough, you know that I, I actually tend to intentionally avoid symmetry. Um, to just give more creative designs, uh, especially if it yields higher efficiency, because oftentimes um, not doing symmetry will give you better efficiency. I'm not saying that buildings like in this game matter that way, but I do tend to avoid it if I can. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I think, is add a couple more different design houses. And I think we'll go, uh, I think we'll, we'll go maybe like this. We'll say we want to maybe put in a house uh, here and uh, let's change the design up again, actually. Go to this one, and we'll place another house design uh, maybe like right here, okay? And um, then we'll place the road, and the road will go this direction, and it will go like that, okay? Now, I was hoping that maybe I'd have enough room for a road to go between here, but really what's most important, and it, it will work, but really what's most important is that we have enough space for them to walk because um, they will they will walk between buildings just fine the road simply gives them a movement uh a movement bonus i guess so their speed so that's fine uh okay so i want to see if this thing is getting built yet uh it's really it's really getting there they need to get these resources over here and i think i'm just gonna i, I know it's not gonna matter much but i'm just gonna do that anyway because that a little extra speed might be the difference between life or death for some of these Vikings. <laughs> All right, so um, once the marketplace is up, this task will be completed and then it will tell me to build a gatherer's hut and things like that. So uh, in the meantime though, while this is building, yep, now the construction is gonna start. Uh, it says there are no active builders, but yet there are people actually building this. And I wanted to show you this. Unfortunately, it's nighttime. They do actually move the resources sitting in the middle of this construction. They will actually go and pick this up and move them into that proper spot that they need them to be and begin working in that spot. So there is an actual like graphical accuracy, if you will, to construction, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I, I love how that, that attention to detail like that is nice. We're gonna make the uh, marketplace a priority now. So the next thing I wanna do is start doing decorations. Decorations are actually really important in this game. They're not just for looks. They can provide a status bump to your colony. They can provide happiness bonuses to your citizens. They can provide production efficiency bonuses to some of your construction or to some of your production buildings too. So there's a lot that could go into those and we're gonna start decorating too. Gatherer's hut, 
the most important tasks here are speed and luck. So I'm gonna say, let's prioritize luck. And we'll say Ulf. Ulf is in here and um, maybe we'll go with speed here. Uh, let's say one and a half. Yeah, you got okay luck too, we'll put you in here. All right, gatherers huts in place. So we're gonna take that off the to-do list before it's even on it. All right, so uh, I think the next thing is, yeah, we're gonna place some decorations. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna say, I want this grand torch. And I think I'll start right in the longhouse with this. We're gonna go one, two, and notice how this costs me silver. There's actually currency in the game. Can be obtained from various activities such as in-village transactions and trade. The bigger we get and the better we are with commerce like this, um, we'll be able to place more decorations, which is great. Uh, the marketplace, I'm not going to bother decorating there. Um, but I might decorate the gatherer's hut because you can see increases the storage space of some buildings. Uh, place more decorations to increase effectiveness. So we can place more decorations. I don't know if I need to place them necessarily within range, although I suspect I do, because if I go to box A, for example, you see these symbols right here? These square symbols on the icons? It corresponds with this one. And so if I place this one, we'll get an area of effect for this particular decoration. And uh, if I place this decoration within range of this building like this, it will hopefully increase effectiveness. At least that's what it sounds like it's doing. So we're going to go in and we're going to say that there's a decoration right here. And it's two silver. And what I'm hoping to see is there's a little bit of progress. There it is. A little bit of progress there to help with this. We can do a bucket here, I guess, as well. Maybe a place like this, I don't know, this little bucket right here. And then um, maybe we have like this stand. Although the stand is uh, something for uh, rich. So it makes the village look richer. Its installation next to houses provides a happiness bonus. So it does not necessarily... It's like you got to pay attention to the different symbols and don't place like a rich thing next to like the gatherers because it's not going to matter. Uh, so we can maybe do something like a cart here. This is kind of interesting. Um, makes it easier for villagers to find directions, increases their walking speed. So uh, we'll say that the cart maybe is out front here. I think that's probably a good idea. We'll place this cart like right here. Uh, that's a pretty big decoration. So what do we got going on here now? There's a little bit of a bump there. We'll, we'll take a breather on the decorations for a second, but um, I do want to eventually place these torches all throughout here so that there's like a lit path. I think that would probably look pretty good. Uh, so the next thing I'd like to start building is actually not possible to build yet because it's not on the list. There's no way to do it yet. You'll notice that some of these things, like the field, cattle ranch, goat ranch, etc., well, these things are not currently available. It says that they're not explored in the Tree of Life. So let's go ahead and take a look at the research tree in this game, which is the Tree of Life. So we start out with five Tree of Life points. They're earned by increasing fame. So the more famous we get, the uh, more prestigious we are, the more we can uh, investigate down this. Uh, fame required for the next for the new point is 500. Currently we have 443. So when we get to 500, we'll have an extra point. I am gonna start by spending the transition to settle life right away and get the field and windmill and all this stuff going so that we can start making bread. I'm also gonna go down and say that villagers are gonna work 1% faster, which is really not that big of a deal. It's 1%, but I do like the fact that crops um, Crops will grow faster. So I like this one. So we're going to do that one too. Okay. Now the next thing over there is mining and stuff, which we don't need to get to for at least the next couple, maybe like two videos from now. But that mining and stuff is a little bit far out for now. All right. So I'm hoping that this is going to get sorted out here. Looks like we have started building the marketplace finally. And you know what? We're probably going to get short on wood in a second here. Um, let's just look at the top of the screen and see. We have 43 wood and 104 timber. So we're actually not that short. Not as short as I thought we were. And um, we should be able to build these houses uh, with the resources we currently have. We should be able to build these houses. The marketplace is going to complete. There we go. And this one can also have its effectiveness raised by having decorations. So let's take a look really quick at decorations. And maybe we say we want like this cart. And we can place that maybe over here like that. Uh, and then we can look at... And again, this is all about the money here, right? Silver. Getting silver. Wooden signal. Uh, increases walking speed. You know, I kind of like that. Maybe we can... I know it's not going to increase effectiveness to a building, but walking speed is kind of cool. And this is a sign, so it's not really going to... Yeah, maybe I'll go that way with it and then have my agriculture be... Yeah, probably... 
So here's what I'll do. Let's um let's add another poor house of the same design kind of right here. We're going to put a pin in that. Just pause it really quick. When these stones are out of the way, I'm going to make a road that goes this way. And then because of that, I think I'll place this decoration down. Uh, let's say, where'd it go? Right here, wooden signal, wooden sign. Let's say we place this decoration down to where it looks that way and that way. Goodness, that's... Uh, okay, they're not really pointed exactly the way I'd like them to be. They're not at a right angle. They're kind of meant to go on a road that's going to go angular out. So it might actually be more fitting to do it here. I mean, I know it doesn't matter, but because it's just the presence of it itself is enough. But uh, I really wish I could flip this thing, but it's fine. We're going to just put it like this for now. It's fine. Uh, okay, so what's the scarecrow? Yield of fields. Oh, we're definitely going to want that too. And then we have these different trophies and all sorts of things, man. This is kind of kind of nuts. I like it. Uh, let's get a couple of barrels near our marketplace. We can put like uh, barrels there. Put another box and maybe set that down. Uh, where's the force forward right there? So put this down maybe like right here. It's like a box they can get into, right? And then finally, we need to assign a marketer. We're looking for speed for this one. So let's go ahead and grab this person here. We'll have at least one person in the marketplace. Okay, so the next thing is we want to c connect roads to our buildings and have at least 10 decorations. So that's the thing that was going to tell me. I already knew that was going to happen. That's why I've been placing them. Uh, but, you know, adding effectiveness is a good thing, too. So we kind of wanted to do that anyway. So back to decorations. I could put, like, uh, yeah, well, actually, let's do one of these. Pole A. So these poles, they add walking speed, but they also make people happier because it adds to our, uh, our the, the richness that our village has, makes our village look rich. So we're gonna wanna place these little signs and stuff here too. And as they build these houses, this, this will be in range. So I'll go ahead and place this one here. Um, we can probably, yeah, place this one here because these two houses are gonna come together. So we'll do like that. Uh, and then we'll also put in another one like right here. And so we're adding more decorations. That completes that objective, very nice. Okay, next thing we wanna do, it says, is build a warehouse and assign a warehouseman. So that's gonna be in storage. We're gonna to go to warehouse and I'm gonna place this, this is a very essential building, and I'm gonna place this right up next to our marketplace like this. And if I get close enough to the road, it will auto connect the road, which is kinda of nice. If you don't want that, then I have to just bring it back. Um, I wish there was a way to kinda of say, hey, don't build a road connection if I don't want it, but there doesn't seem to be a way to do that. There is, for the symmetry people out there, in case you're wondering, a way to align buildings with other structures. Just hold X and you can align them. I, like I said, I'm probably not gonna do that very often because I like the organic look of it all, but um, if I need to align them for some reason, then I can. you can do that. All right, so we're currently looking at 132 timber. This is fantastic, I love this. Lots and lots of timber, it's great. Uh, the Gatherer's Hut's already working on getting us herbs, and um, they should be hoping, hopefully getting us fruits as well. But since the herbs are being sourced from here, it makes sense that the herbalist would also be here. So now we have our medicine person, a medicine man, medicine person, whatever, and they're going to be kind of near, uh, I think nearby the warehouse. I, I think I actually will go ahead and just place this right next to this. So kind of like in the city center in that way, which is kind of nice. Uh, we're up to 116 silver now. We're definitely gaining prestige here, which is nice. We're going to go into decorations, and I want to get these torches going. So these two torches are on this side. So we'll go ahead and put another one, let's say, here. And then another one can go right there. And then another one can go right there and right there. That's That seems fine. And then maybe another one will be over here. And then as we come over this way, put another one there. And then another one can go there. And then another one can go there. And then one more out that way. So at nighttime, we're going to see this road is lit up now. So people can walk and be able to see where they're going as they walk, which is going to be nice. All right. So the next thing, what the reason why I went up the Tree of Life, and I wanted to do it earlier than the game tells me to, is I want to get a field going. And we're going to make our fields 
by drawing fences. And this is very expensive for silver. So I probably should do this while I still can. And I've got to figure out kind of how far apart. So let's say the road is going to be here, which costs me silver as well. So I'm not going to build it yet. And then we're probably going to have a windmill maybe right here. And so the field could go, I think, on this side, maybe like right like here. So we'll make the fence. Now, this thing is going to have so many of these pop-up warnings are going to be in our face. And it's just going to be notifying us that we're getting in the way of something. Like, there's a tree here, okay? Uh, and it's growing. So it's probably not going to allow me to, uh, to build it, but we're going to see. So this field, we're going to make it go all the way out like this. And if you have enough silver, you can make this happen. But you got to make sure you're not hitting things. And so it looks like I am. So what I'm going to need to do... It's just simply get rid of all these undergrown trees. They won't cut them down. This is just a way for me to clear it. And then I'm going to have to go in and go to field again. And again, like the road will be here. Windmill. So let's say that the field will start. Uh, let's say the field windmill. I forget how big the windmill is. Uh, I think it's going to fit here. Let's leave them a little extra space just in case. Because I can't move these things once I'm done. So uh, we'll go out. About like this, I want a lot of, gr we need a lot of wheat, right? So now it says we need a hundred silver to make this. Yikes, so this is really expensive, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit sh smaller here to start, I guess, unfortunately. So we're gonna save this and we'll go. Now this is gonna be our wheat field. It cost me 72 silver to make this, it's ridiculous. Uh, but we can now go in and select wheat from this field. And so we can also assign a couple of farmers. And the best talents, of course, are those with high strength. And so if I want to select them manually, like this guy's got 0.5. He's not the, not the best at it. I can select them manually from this menu here as well. So I can say, you're good for the task. And I can also say that, uh, let's, let's save you for a different job here in a second. Uh, because you have a little bit more speed. And uh, we'll go here. So two farmers are going to get started on this area here. Now, I want to have a road if I have, this, if I have the money to do it, which I'm not sure I do, but we're just going to place, yeah, four more silver. That's fine. So that that's going to be my road. So as soon as this stone is out of the way, I can go in and put down my windmill. And I probably could have checked that. Um, I don't need to guess how big it is. I can, can, I can have access to the building, so I should be able to see this. It looks like I left myself just enough room. Yeah, it's a good thing I decided to give myself extra room on that side. So uh, the windmill I'm going to put right here. And this will be very close to where our wheat is growing. I think that'll be pretty uh, optimal. You can also get wheat storage and stuff being close by too. So that should be pretty ideal too. Oh, look at the... I love the day-night like the day -night cycle in the game. is really fantastic. There are certain elements of like graphics. Like if we just really look at the different building models and stuff ignoring how fast people are moving because I'm trying to get them to go faster. But I think they did a great job on these things. Look at the longhouse. Look at this thing. I'm trying to get... There it is. My mouse was kind of stuck for a second. Look at this thing. I mean, they just... I think they did a really stellar job. Kind of looks like uh, Valheim, that game. It's called Valheim, right? Yeah. Where you walk around as like a exploration game and building game and whatever. Like, they've done a good job at like, you know... Norse sort of Viking building. I, I think it's nice. It has a little Skyrim feel to it, too. I kind of like that, too. Um, and uh, if we take a look also at the water, I just want to give credit where credit's due on the water. It looks wonderful. All right. They did a really good job on the water. And um, the aurora, right? These northern lights that happen at night that light up the sky. I just, I think that they're really swell. I think they're great. Uh, yeah, so let me take a look. So this guy's tired, and so he should probably... Well, no, he said he was tired. Now he's not tired. Is there any way to find these guys? Jump to villager. There it is. And jump to villager's house. So that's his house. Uh, he must have just woke up, and that's why he was there. Okay. And then his work building. He's just an idle laborer. Okay. Um, one thing we could maybe do is get more food production. And I think a hunter's hut... Uh, somebody to hunt, uh, this would be a good thing. So we're going to take a look around and see where we could hunt. 90% uh, is pretty good. 100% is better, obviously. So let's go ahead and mark this 100% uh, hunting here. 
So we'll go ahead and get uh, the hunter to be built here. And then we can uh, have somebody way out here just hunting, trying to get more food that way. Now these fields, they'll go in and try to work them uh, as soon as I mark it as... Yeah, yeah, I want, I want you guys to plant things, okay? So go plant things, do your thing, okay? Um, so we're going to go in and hopefully do this. Now they're active workers, but eventually they're going to want water in their cycle. So they have, you have the planting stage, then you water them, and then it grows, then you harvest, and then the, the plant dies. If, if it gets too... Uh, if it stays there too long or winter hits, then uh, it'll die. So what we want to do is we want to give them access to water. And that is where the well comes in. And I think on this side is a great spot for the well because I'm going to have more, more fields. I want to have a field here. I'm not going to have one here. So we're going to have another field on this side. And so we'll have the well be positioned right about here. And this should be a good spot for us to grow things into the future. And I don't have enough silver for even that road. Oh, I just got silver. Okay. Uh, I, I know where I want the road to be. So that's really all that matters. Uh, so we have these stone. And I, I think they are going to need to haul this stuff away before, before I can build here. And I don't think there is a command that I can give them to sort of rush in... Uh, you know, haul these stones away pronto. I don't think I have the ability to do that. Um, so I'm wondering if it will allow me to, to build this building or if I have to wait for them to do that. And it looks like it is going to say it's colliding with something. So I have to wait until this. I do wish the game had a haul priority sort of function in it so that I could say, haul this out of my way and then get the production on that started. But to be honest, the wheat is going to take a while to grow anyway. Um, we'll be able to build the windmill before those before those grow, I think. Uh, we'll see. Uh, now, you'll see that since trees have been cut down, we'll sprout again unless construction is built in that area. It's all part of the tutorial thing there. So I've already cut down these trees, but they grew back because we didn't grow anything in that area. And so, uh, you know, it's okay to cut down all the trees that are local. They'll come back on their own. There we go. Um, mark these ones here to two. We're getting a little bit low on wood, so I want to make sure I can get that going. And then, of course, they're still doing these stone. I think what I'll actually do is I'll tell them to not take any more stone. You do not need to pick into any more stone here uh, because we already have a lot of stone laying around. Uh, we have 195 stone just laying around. So I think um, just getting them to haul the stone we already have cut up uh, and, and broken apart, I guess, whatever you want to call it, uh, I think that's going to be ultimately a better decision. Just get them to bring the stone we already have instead. All right, let me let this run for a little bit. Uh, let them get going. You can see this symbol right here. These guys are hungry. And uh, and this is just because currently all we're doing is gathering here, which is why I wanted to get the field going faster. The tutorial doesn't tell you to get that field going. In fact, I don't even recommend you building a hunting hut. Um, but you, you absolutely should... <laughs> build multiple sources of food especially sources that can withstand the winter like hunting uh in fact i think i might actually go in and see about getting another hunting hut somewhere uh you know like we have gathering happening over there maybe hunting can happen over here i'm not sure what determines the percentage i thought initially it was like the density of trees and it may just be that uh, i might just be uh worried about nothing here but we got 90 percent over here and how close is that? You know what? That's that's not bad. We could say 90% is okay here. I don't think there's 100% anywhere in this area. It doesn't look like it. So 90 it is. So we're going to say 90% is right here. And that will be where our next hunting hut is. Now, I want to make sure that that hunter gets up really fast. So I'm going to come over here. And we're just going to say that's a priority. Let's add another builder. Okay. So we just got... Newcomers will arrive in your village. So there is obviously lots of nomadic people, people who have been displaced, people who have been looted in this case. Um, They're traveling around the world uh, looking for better colonies, better places, better ways of life. Uh, these newcomers were seen coming towards the village. Several families, including children, were able to escape. Uh, these They were attacked by looters, it looks like. Uh, since they could not bring any of their belongings with them, they had to leave everything behind. At the end of the day long journey they reach your village they need a place to stay in, 
and food, they want to be to join your village. So we can tell them that they can join or we they cannot join. Now we will earn fame by allowing them to join, but we might get new events that will uh, prop up the village too. It could be positive, could be negative. Sometimes it's um, just the village saying, hey, you need to do this, or there's a conflict between the new people and the old people, etc. So like big things can clash, but ultimately this is gonna grow our population. It means more workers, means more productivity, does mean more mouths to feed. So we'll have to look at that, but I think it'll be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and let them join this time. And this will now have 28 people in our village. Now you'll notice right away, as soon as we do this, maybe you won't notice it right away, but it's not, it's not immediately obvious, but there's these tiny little logos. And I think they might be bigger on your screen when you play the game, uh, but because I'm in 4K, I think these icons are not scaling. That's the only thing I could think of because they're actually quite small. I could be wrong though. Um, I wish they were a little bit bigger, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Anyway, they are homeless, okay? Which means we don't have enough houses. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Let them go ahead and build uh, new houses. It's actually pretty important that they build those new houses. So I'm gonna say that this hunting place does not need to be a priority anymore. And we have a lot of houses we need now. We brought in quite a few people there. So I think I'm gonna go off the back side of this. And we're going to say that I want, uh, let's go uh, three more poor houses, I think. We'll, we'll go about like this. It'll be one. Uh, we could do another one that looks the same. I, I do like diversity in how these things look, though. So I'm going to just kind of redo two here like this. Doesn't have to be exactly... I mean, they're different size footprints, so you can't make them exactly symmetrical. But I think we can get this to just kind of be kind of like this, maybe, perhaps. Or it doesn't quite fit in this spot. Yeah, it's not quite fitting there. Let's um, let's just do two of these, I guess, because they uh, they'll fit here. So we'll we'll say that I want this one like so, uh, like so. Yep, and then I was holding control, not shift. Okay, good for me. Uh, and like that. All right. So more houses because we have more people and we have to make sure that they stay happy. How are we doing on the hunting place? I do think that they don't build things fast enough. I really wish they would build things faster than they do. But this is really far away. I can understand that. Since we got some extra fame, we also got a little bit of extra money. So I'm gonna take and spend some of that to just extend this path even further down to give them a little bit faster travel, just a little bit faster travel to getting out that way. Spent most of my money on this field, which uh, as you can see, it is all planted looks like. So we're probably gonna get to the watering stage now and this well, well, the well's not built either, so we're not going to be able to water this until we have the well built as well. So let's add another builder. Since we have more people, we can have more builders now. Um, let's make sure we don't overstaff. Okay, we have 15 laborers. That should be fine. Um, let's get a second carpenter. And um, probably should get another gathering hut too, right? Just for that more, more food. So let's maybe get another gatherer's hut, and we'll see where we can maybe go with this. Uh, it's a hundred percent on this side over here too. So that's not bad. Um, another hundred percent here. It's not going to like line up with anything, but you know what? It gives it character. So we'll have another gatherer's hut here uh, as well. It's not prioritized. The homes are the priority right now because we don't want people to be super upset. So, um, let's make sure we can get those going. And, uh, I think there's really only two buildings that are prioritized right now, which is the homes and this uh, this hunting hunting hut, the hunting hut. Yes, which I mean, look at this. Like, I love how they just bring. I, I do wish they would like have wagons and stuff. I mean, we have broken wagons and functional wagons as decorations, but we don't use them to transport the wood. So that's a little bit weird. Um, maybe there's some research to that going forward, but like. Having like having a wagon be a decoration where like this right here, right? Having this be a decoration item, not functional. I gotta say, I'm a little bit annoyed by that. Just it's a little bit weird. Just to give me something that is so useful 
and tell me that it's only for looks. I don't, I don't really care for that. That's unfortunate. Uh, we've also got another tree that grew in our place here. They haven't quite gotten these, this stone out of here yet, but I am going to just wait until that stone's out of here and then I can hopefully get the, uh, the, the windmill in as well. But we need a lot more stuff happening and a lot, we're not, we're not working fast enough. I need these guys to work faster. Uh, let's go into the tree of life. And we can tell that we can say that they're happier now. Uh, we can also say that they work 2% faster, which is really low. I, I don't know why that's worth it for 2%, but okay. And that's, that's, that's just one additional percent, actually. It's not even that big of a deal, but it is uh, it is what it is. Uh, and then we might as well make them even happier here, too. So we'll go down this path, and then we can take the extra two. And um, I think we will say that our crops are more durable and that... Uh, grain warehouse is probably 10% more space. Eh, I think I'd rather they work faster. So I'm going to tell them to work faster because currently eh, people don't really work faster, fast enough in this game as far as I'm concerned. So that's my opinion though. You see, we still haven't built the warehouse. We still haven't built the herbalist hub. And uh, perhaps if we had the warehouse, things would work faster. I, I don't think that's the case. This is the place where products like leather, wool, and clothes are stored. So it's not really a place for wood and stone, which is kind of sitting out in the open here, right? And we, we could store it, but like they can just go get it, you know? I don't, um, like, it's not really gonna save me a lot of time to have an official stone storage when they can just go get it. If the construction's over here, they can just go pick it up from over here, right? So if anything, not having a single cent a centralized storage right now is a more efficient path just because I'm building on both sides of this and there's stone sitting on the ground on both sides of this. But that's what I'm kind of hoping for anyway. Uh, looks like these guys are hungry. We have four meals prepared. Yeah, four meals, 35 population now. Average happiness is 71, being brought down by the fact that they don't have houses. We have 964 fame. I assume we'll get another point in the tree when we get to 1,000. It seems like a natural milestone to hit. Uh, and then this is the defense point in the village. It can be increased by training new warriors or installing defense decorations. Warriors on mission are not included in the defense. The defense decorations add to the defense of the village. Which is a little weird, because if you take a look at, say, decorations, and you go to, like, the shield, where is it, right here? This adds one, uh, increases defense. It's just the shield sitting there on the side, in the road, even. Like, it's it's not even, like, look, boom. It's just a shield. It's decoration, sure, but I, I don't know what it's actually doing for me in terms of the defense. Just stuck in the, in the road there. But it does, it does... This number hasn't gone up, so maybe it just it literally is just a decoration, even though the description of it does say that it uh, helps the field, or helps the defense of the village. Uh, okay, so we've got builders now. We need to keep them going. Advantageous work for builders. Um, I don't know if there is a stat that's better for builders or not. So I'm just going to maybe do like this all-around stat, maybe like this person here. Just get more people in the builders list so we can build things faster let's get this house prioritized and then we'll go over and let's make this road just a little bit longer and then we'll go ahead and have this also go that direction and these are um these are expensive like the, the pads are expensive so i don't necessarily need to you can be more efficient if you simply don't make roads and just make you know rows of houses but you don't need roads near the houses right where you really need roads are places where you really want people to uh you know walk faster but aesthetics oh, hey, pause aesthetics for the place though uh are it just looks better to have roads okay here's our hunter's hut it is done we're gonna say advantageous traits are power and luck Okay, and we can also increase uh, more more decoration to increase effectiveness. Yeah, so um, we want power and luck. So this person has a good balance. We'll go ahead and put you in there. And then this person is an okay balance as well. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, let's take, um, let's have this person here as another, another person that's decently in balance. Or maybe, 
Uh, we'll see one speed, one speed, 1.5 smarts. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, put you in there. So we have two hunters, and I believe their clothing will change in the picture too, because it goes with their job. So um, people can sometimes change how they look in their pictures based on what jobs you give them. So we'll, we'll check back on those and you can see what I mean. It's uh, not immediately obvious right away, but little, little tiny things like that do happen. Uh, okay, so I think maybe we'll get one more marketplace person as well, and speed is the name of the game here. It's all about speed, so we'll say that this person is my candidate to be that, that person there, and then we'll go ahead and prioritize the warehouse uh, in addition to this home. So, and it looks to me like they finally got the stone out of the way. That's good. Let's make sure there's no trees straggling, and then we'll go ahead and drop in the, uh, the windmill here. Let's just spin this around. And the windmill will go right up like this. All right. The windmill is necessary to take the wheat and to process that into grain, right? That's the whole nature of it. The well is done. And so, therefore, the fields can now be watered. So we should start getting that going. One other thing I kind of want to do, and um, I don't know where I'm going to do it yet, but I would like to get like a cattle ranch and stuff going, maybe a goat farm or a chicken coop or something. I'd like to get other diverse sources of food that are immune to winter. We cannot grow this in the winter. So gathering, I believe, will probably falter in the winter as well, I would imagine. So I don't believe we're going to survive very long in the winter on essentially just a hunter's cabin. So we're gonna need some other things. And I think probably going down the cattle ranch or goat ranch route is probably gonna help me for this. So let's say we do cattle and I can maybe put this over on this side, although it's, it's very bumpy. The cattle ranch needs some extra space too. Uh, so maybe we'll put it over here near the water. Uh, I don't wanna get in the way of the gatherer's place, but if we do it over here, it doesn't really look good here, does it? Uh, maybe we, maybe on this side. I'd like homes to be here though. So I guess I will put it here. I don't think it looks great here, but we're, we're going to do it anyway. So we'll place this down. And then what you do is you tell it how much space do you want? And I think this is a fine amount of space for now. So this will be our cattle ranch eventually. Uh, we need obviously some stuff to be delivered here, but eventually that'll be a cattle ranch. And, um, hopefully we can start getting again, other sources of food for our people. So the warehouse is done. Let's get the herbalist up and running. It's almost done anyway. Uh, they're starting to build a little bit faster. I like it. So the warehouse, it's all about speed. And so we'll get somebody who's fast. Let's put this person in. And I think that's it. Just one for now is fine. That's going to be fine. So this objective will get completed as soon as this building is done. And I assign it. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted, guys. Look at the sun coming up over the water like that. That's just cool. I, I don't see the sun actually over there, though. So that's the that's the interesting part, though. <laughs> like, it's coming over the water, but I don't see it in the air, in, in the in the sky, right? Uh, okay, so newcomers will arrive to your village. We can tell them they can join again. Requires even more houses. I'm a little bit short on that, but I've got lots of timber and lots of stone left. So I think we can focus on houses. We might be okay. So, and again, we need more people to be getting food uh, as well. I want more fame. So um, let's take this just this once and uh, we'll let them in. So that just means again, more houses needed. And I think we'll go ahead and have, uh, let's say life. Life is what I want. I want life. Poor house, another poor house. We'll put one on the corner here. Put another one here and maybe another one like right about like here. Yeah, I know there's a, they look the same and they're right next to each other, but it is what it is. Uh, and then this tree can go, which looks like it's just big enough to cut down. But I think these three houses should be enough because we already are getting these two built as is. So um, I think we I think we'll be fine here. I do need to make sure that this building is operational when this is done growing. I would really like to, to make sure that that's a thing. And let's make sure we have more than uh, more than this many planters. We'll go here. Let's make sure we have two people working in that field. Uh, okay, yep. So I'm going to let this go a little bit longer. I, I think maybe we should prioritize this neighborhood over the other one that's brand new. So 
Let's get these two houses to be prioritized. And then this road is going to eventually work its way around, I think, maybe like that and, and meet up with there. Or we could have it go a little bit diagonal and have houses go along that side. Not sure how I want to play that yet. I don't think it matters much. Um, and actually, we can now assign a doctor. So a doctor is all about intelligence. So we'll say intelligence. And this person looks like they're pretty good. But they... I, I don't know what this is. Like, they don't have a path. You don't have a path to get here or what? Hilda. Hilda is our doctor. Okay, good. So we got the treatments objective done. Uh, now bread production, right? So bread production is our next thing. Um, and also we increased our population. So that objective is going to be completed now too. But uh, this one, right? Bread production. So build a field, build a well, order wheat production, assign farmers, etc. And then finally build a wheat granary, build a windmill and assign a miller and produce your first bread. So the last thing we're gonna need is a wheat granary. So we're gonna go into, I think, storage here. We'll go to wheat granary. And it's a pretty pretty large building, but um, if we put it right across from this, I think it's gonna be most ideal. So we can just place this kind of like right here. And then now it says time to go fishing. I don't know if, I'd never done fishing yet, so I don't know if that works in the winter or not. We'll have to see. All right, so one thing I'm gonna do here as I let the clock run here, I'm noticing that I'm having a hard time keeping up on wood. Um, the keeping up on l the timber is actually really easy, um, but the wood is difficult. And that's because this building has been set to basically do unlimited here. So I am going to actually set a limit here. We're going to say 100 is the limit. So it should stop producing now. You just take one guy out of this. So I have additional people. We're going to start delivering wood instead to the wheat granary. So that when this field is ready to harvest, we can bring it in here. And then it needs to be in here before this windmill will run. Now, one of the other objectives, I'm not sure how these things got closed. One of the other objectives uh, is that we need to, in addition to building that stuff, it says it's time to go fishing. And so what we can build is a fishing hut. And I believe it's in the C tab right here. So the fishing hut is a pier. Now, this is not like other games we've played where the fishing hut exists and then people go to the end of the dock and they just get fish brought in. That's not how this works. Instead, the fishing hut is a place where boats can be moored. And so the fishing, the, the fishermen actually go out on boats and they all go gather it and they fish out in the, in the sea and way out deep in deeper water. And then they bring the fish back, which means we can build this, but we don't have any boats. So we need to build a shipyard first. Okay, take a look at this over here. We have four fame right now, which is enough to unlock this area. And if we do it, go ahead and do that. And this next one, this is where the shipyard is. And it takes four fame to unlock this. So we're going to need three more. Then we can build a shipyard. So that's what we're going to start working towards. So we're going to start working towards that shipyard if we can. Okay. Now, all the while... We're going to constantly be making more houses. Eventually, we're going to get the cattle ranch in. <laughs> it takes a lot, man. Um, and, but eventually, we're going to get more stuff. So there is the wheat granary. It's done now. We can start, again, I think continue logging, continue cutting down trees. It needs to happen. I have to start getting further and further away to do this, which is part of the challenge, I think, of a larger map is start going further and further away to get the resources you want. But um, I'm going to go ahead and mark them out so we can get them. And um, we're also going to need more stone. So let's go ahead and get the stone worked on as well. Hopefully that happens uh, sooner rather than later as well. I'm going to go into the jobs actually right here. And I'm going to pull back on the number of builders so that we have more people as laborers that can go out and do things. Uh, and now this field is actually ready to be harvested now. So we can go in and harvest it. And the farmers will go in and do that. Okay. Well... I think that's pretty much everything I really wanted to accomplish for the first video for the series. So if you guys like this, make sure you are uh, hitting the like button down below. It really helps the channel grow. It really helps the series get recognized and helps it spread out. And if you like this video and you want more of this game, please let me know. There is a lot of stuff happening there. Uh, and the next task is going to be yeah, preparing for winter. That's the next thing to do. And to do that, we're going to want to get into the woodshed. And that's going to have to be the next thing 
that we build. And I'm going to build it, I think, right here. Right here next to the carpenter. I think that's a good spot for it. So we're going to build that next. And I'll make that actually a priority so we can get that done in time. All right. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Take care, guys. We'll see you. Bye-bye.